we look at the problem that is commonly found in either textbook or exams of a discrete mathematics class. So the statement is for a sequence of n plus 1, n squared plus 1, distinct real numbers, you can always find a subsequence of length n plus 1 or more element that is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. There's a lot of information to digest here. huh? So it's good to start with a real example here. So for example, I have a 10 element sequence from A1 to A10, this uh, value here. Now, how do I find what is n here? n would be 3, right? So n equals 3, n squared plus 1 would be 10, and n plus 1 would be 4. What well, the statement says, for a sequence of n elements here, I can always find four, subse four element subsequence that is strictly increasing. Let's try that. Increasing 9 and 10, and then you have to stop. Here, there's nothing to increase from. But here is going to be 3, and 1, to 3 is going to be 3 also. So you cannot find four element subsequence that is strictly increasing. How about decreasing? Decreasing you can do better. You know, for example, 10, and then 8, and then go to 7, 4, 1. You have 5 element already, right? So let's mark it. 10, 8, and then 7, and then 4, and then 1. 5 element. So the statement is true for this particular case, but how do we prove the statement in a general case? So the tool we're going to use is what is called a generalized pigeonhole principle. So what it says is for n objects, if you try to put in k boxes, then some box must contain at least n over k seen in here. So let's plug in the number in our case, right? So we, we have big N, 10 elements. And let's say if you want to put them into n here, it would be three boxes. And then what we're saying here is that 10 over 3 and seen in here, that would equal 4. In other words, one box must contain four or more elements. That's what generalized pigeonhole principle says. Okay, so with that as a tool, we're going to try to prove the statement, right? So in order to prove the statement, what we're going to do, we try to construct another sequence. The sequence is xi's. Okay, so how do we define xi? So it's going to so we're going to define xi to be the length, yeah, length of strictly increasing subsequence from a sub i. So, for example, what is x1? x1 is going to be length of strictly increasing subsequence, I would say it's longest. This is the longest length. Okay, so here, if you start from a1, which is 9, what is the longest subsequence you can run to be strictly increasing. That would be 9 and 10. That's it. You have to stop because there's no number bigger than 10 here. Right? So x1 would be 2. How about x2? a2 is 10. What is the longest increasing subsequence? Unfortunately, you cannot go because you are already the biggest. So the value is 1. How about 8? There's nothing bigger than you, so it's 1. How about 5? Oh, 5, you can go to 6 and 7. So the longest the sequence here is going to be length 3. Okay, length 3 here. How about 6? Length 2, 7, length 1. How about 4? Here, there's nothing bigger than you, so you can have only have yourself, that which is 1. How about 1? You have 1, 2, 3, so that value is 3. How about 2? You have 2, 3, so it's 2. So this is well-defined. So either... Just take a value from 1 to 
up to n square plus 1. All right. So that's good. Now we start the proof. Now one observation with this definition, we claim one property. Okay, so we claim by definition, if i smaller than j, and if a i smaller than a j, we claim that the definition of x i has to be bigger than x j. Why is that is the case? Because remember, AI appear, what this says is AI appear earlier in the sequence. Here the value is smaller. So you would imagine you can have an increasing subsequence from AI, including AJ and all the increasing, all the numbers that is increasing afterwards, right? So in other words, XI must be at least as big as SJ plus one, right? So give an example here, right? So we have example, this is highlighted here. So we have four and six, all right? So what we're saying that the index four is smaller, right? And then six, and the value is also smaller. But then the X value here must be bigger. Yeah, why? Because whatever the subsequence seven has, and then five, along with seven and the subsequence is also strictly increasing subsequence. So this this just a, a value has to be one more. In this case, it's two more than the other guy, right? So you can also include six. So that's the important property we're going to use in our proof, okay? Think about it. You, you pause the video if you want to, right? This is just by definition and um, of x size. Okay, so let's start with the proof. Okay, so what I will claim is this. So the statement saying that we have n plus one element that is strictly increasing. Let's prove by assume that all the x i's is a lot bigger than n plus one. In other words, is at most n, right? For everyone, for i from one to n squared plus one. Okay, so in other words, we try to say the strictly increasing one does not exist. Then we're going to prove that if that is the case, we must have a strictly decreasing subsequence of n plus one element. And we're going to use a general pigeonhole principle here. So here, we're going to use the principle here because we have this many values, right? Xi has n plus 1, n squared plus 1, and you can only take n values. So in our case, the big N is n squared plus 1. The k boxes is going to be n. And the pigeonhole principle says that n over k seeming, earlier we know that that is n plus 1. So in other words, there must be one box. What is a box? Box is some value here, right? Because we're taking 1 to n, right? So there must be one box. There exists a box with the value of m, right? That is, that box contain at least this many elements. What are the elements? Are the x i values. So in other words, there must be, it has, the box has n plus one elements, right? So we have x, we have x i one, um, sorry, and x x i two, and x i n plus one, so that they all equal to each other, right? They all equal to each other and they all equal a particular box that is m, okay? And here, what i1, i2 are in the increasing order, right? And then i, m plus one, yeah? So we claim that the corresponding sequence has to be decreasing. In other words, a, this is gonna be a, i2, 
and then a a sub m plus one. In other words, we have found a strictly decreasing subsequence with m plus one element given by pigeonhole principle. Now, why that is the case though? Okay, this is uh, by the earlier property. We can prove by contradiction, right? So if a i one smaller than a i two, since i one smaller than i two, earlier we claimed that the corresponding x must be one or more than the other guy, right? Which contradicts with the, the fact that we know all the values here they are the same because the pigeonhole principle said that there's the same you know same value here yeah from one to n boxes right so that's the proof okay so basically saying that uh, either you have a strictly increasing one if not there must be n plus one um, decreasing subsequence Okay, so another proof, which is similar concept, is using the regular. Okay, so the method two uses the regular pigeonhole principle. So I'm not going to details, but on the high level, this is what it, what what it goes. So for a one, a two, which is original sub uh, sequence here, you define x one, x two and x n square plus one as before that is the length of longest increasing subsequence and similarly you define x y one y two and y n square plus one to be the length of longest decreasing subsequence from that position right so you define a pair of numbers so 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 totally you have y1 and you have x n square plus one and y n square plus one now if you also prove by contradiction so if the sequence does not exist then all the values here right x n y i can only take a value from one to n and there are at most n times n equal n square possible values but then you have n square plus one objects so which means by the pigeonhole principle by the regular pigeonhole principle so you must have i smaller than j such that xi yi equal xj yj right because they can only take a value from one to n right so here you can have a contradiction basically saying that if ai is smaller than aj then by the definition of xi xi has to be greater than yi right which is, which is a contradiction with the fact that they're, they're equal right so if ai is bigger than ij now sorry this should be x xj then uh, y yi has to be bigger than yj right so because including ai you would have a decrease in sequence along with ajs right similar to our argument earlier right so that's uh, another proof um so hopefully you follow the steps here and uh, um, please go back and try to repeat the steps yourself all right thank you